Before he was Arthur Curry, before he was King of Atlantis, before he was Aquaman, he was a baby who survived being abandoned and left to die, raised by the seas and adopted by an old fisherman. The yet-to-be Aquaman learned the ways of the surface world before returning to the seas in search of his true purpose. We got it. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geek Them. This time we're going back undersea with another Aquaman review. This time we're talking The Legend of Aquaman, aka Keith Giffen's tenure, small run, if you will, with the character. This was pretty interesting. For a long time I had heard of this book, but it's, it's finally here. It was reprinted for the very first time in trade paperback form. And uh, it gives us the 89 uh, series, which only lasted five issues and a one-shot special edition thing, which I'll get into. Basically, this book looks to reinvent the character's origin story by giving us something completely different than what was established before. And it may or may not be to everybody's liking. Then it goes off into a weird territory where it's a pseudo sequel to the previous stuff that was being written and gives us a whole new story. But then at the end of this, it got uh, rebooted once again. So really the best way to treat this uh, offshoot is a what if or an else world, in my opinion. Yeah, it takes some uh, liberties with the story, but if you love the character, you're gonna have some type of enjoyment, but unfortunately, if you're not a fan of the character, I have a very tough time recommending this book to you, specifically, because one, we get, uh, and I believe it's called, um, it says so right here in the back, uh, Aquaman Special Number One, by the way, this was a much better looking cover than this because this is just way too weird. In, in the context of the book, it makes sense, but as a cover, ugh, I don't know. I would have picked something else, something a little bit more uh, bright. But anyways, the special reinvents the origin where you have the character that was uh, abandoned and then uh, he grew up uh, by himself in the ocean and eventually uh, Arthur Sr. finds him as an adult and adopts him and it's just a really weird way to introduce the character as an to, to present an origin for this character I should say without you know because previously the character had such a rich history of being a, a descendant of uh, the crown and all that stuff and uh, the symbolism of Arthur Sr. finding him as a baby and raising him and teaching him human values, compassion, morals, and all that stuff. Whereas here, he's already an adult, he's naked, and then this older dude finds him, and then there's like this big wrestling match in the water, and Arthur Sr. Uh, doesn't really have a lot to say or impart uh, wisdom on the character. And when the time comes for Arthur to move on and he finds Atlantis, then they bridge the gap into him uh, finding out that he's uh, he's going to be king and then he he's imprisoned because he's an outsider. He's put in this aquarium with the rest of the prisoners and they all wear the uh, traditional uh, orange outfit. I don't like that. I don't like the idea of the hero costume being associated with uh, crime and punishment. I think it's fit that he uses it as a more of a regal outfit, more of a, a, a kingly outfit, if you will, I should say. So to associate something that is supposed to be really awesome and cool with prison, and even the character says in the book that, uh, you know, it's a reminder, like he's going to keep using it to remind himself of where he came from. I'm like, nah, man, this, this sucks. I, I, I wouldn't, like, if you were to go to prison and they give you one of those orange jumpsuits and you get out, you're not going to be like, I'm going to keep wearing the orange jumpsuit because I'm proud. No, it's just silly and kind of dumb in my opinion. But regardless, uh, Keith does a 
commendable job of establishing a new origin story. Uh, the character eventually, you know, uh, meets Mira and all that stuff. They have uh, Arthur Jr. And here is where the story just goes off uh, and just becomes something bizarre. Uh, you might, you may or may not know from the late 70s, early 80s, that Arthur Jr., spoilers, from a 30 plus year old story, uh, the character of Arthur Jr. dies at the hands of Black Manta, and Aquaman was somewhat uh, at fault because of this. So, this is the uh, divergent point, I guess, the diverting point where this story takes off. Uh, you have Aquaman going into exile, he is upset at what happened, Mira is devastated, they take her into an insane asylum. So when the character comes back, he finds out that this mysterious alien, possible alien force, is at fault for imprisoning uh, political parties. They are causing a destabilization of the military and the kingdom of Atlantis itself. So Arthur obviously teams up. I should have mentioned earlier that he meets up with Volko for the first time. He was in prison as well. It's a very on the nose word like story for aquaman the whole origin of the whole premise of this book is very war oriented it's not necessarily my cup of tea and it can be a little bit weird to read especially if you're used to the swashbuckling adventures and all that stuff plus there is a humorous factor involved when you find out that there are giant jellyfish roaming around trying to control people i am not uh kidding uh I typically sh uh, stay away from spoilers, but yeah, there you go. Giant jellyfish that look like uh, Krang from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They're in charge of controlling Atlantis, and <laughs> it's up to Aquaman to try and stop him. Look, this is all really far-fetched and really silly, but if you're a fan like I am of the character and the whole mythos and all that stuff, you're going to have a fun time reading this. It's a little bit corny, the dialogue is super rugged in my opinion, and it may not be for everybody, especially because from panel to panel, or from scene to scene I should say, actions occur at the turning of a page. Like literally, something bad will be happening, and then they do a complete 180 and something else happens. A, a total mood change uh, that is just a little bit bizarre. So. Uh, the one positive of this book, The Legend of Aquaman, has to be the art by a uh, by Robert Lauren Fleming. Uh, he is legendary, of course, and the art is no exception. I love the restoration that went into this with the crisp and beautiful details and just a really bright, colorful, and impressive looking book, in my opinion. There's some of the artwork right there. Here's what I mean. Atlantis is usually depicted as an open space. The barrier is to keep people out, but inside, like, I don't know, everything's a little bit too dry, so uh, it's, it's a little bit odd when you consider the great work that was established before and then afterward with Peter David and all that stuff. You know, I guess some of the appeal here for this book would be the character of Arthur coming to the realization that even though he had left the crown and he comes back, part of the appeal, the charm of the Aquaman or Arthur Curry or whatever, or the hero per se, is that he can unify all these people. Even though he is long gone and he returns in the moment of crisis, he still has this innate ability to unite people of different backgrounds for a common goal or looking past themselves for the greater good and working together for a brighter future. I think that part, I think uh, Keith nails it. It's just the clunky dialogue, the weird tonal shifts, and just the bizarre story, the nature of the story, and the weird ass origin that make me not recommend this book wholeheartedly. Um, I don't know. There's a reason why this only lasted five issues. Everything gets resolved and we move on to better and more awesomer things, I should say. But yeah, The Legend of Aquaman, if you're interested in a small piece of the character's history, then pick it up. Have you read The Legend of Aquaman? Let me know down below what you think and how would you fight an invading army of jellyfish. I'm very interested in knowing. 
Guys, as always, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to We Can Keep Them here on YouTube. As always, you can follow me on your favorite social media platform. I'm probably there. I will catch all of you on our next video.